So I'm sharing the screen and uh, we'll begin with the refuges and precepts. And before we um, chant together the refuges and precepts, let's, uh, as we arrive here in the body, on this earth, at this place, at this time, this being your little place, little spot on the earth, where you are, let's bring to mind the and acknowledge and honor and respect the the ancestors who have lived in wherever we are this place where we are for millennia Acknowledging and honoring and respecting and gratitude for the stewardship of the land here in Chachaga, Montreal, especially acknowledging the Kanyakahaga people, this place of nourished by the, the rivers and streams. and orienting ourselves, bringing the mind to, to recognize that we are children of the earth. The earth is our mother. Our bodies are composed of earth, water, fire, air, and space. Our bodies are borrowed. They are nature. And they return to nature. And so the earth, the waters, the sun, the stars, the air, the space is our body. And we can bring an intention to love all of these elements that we find around us and within us and be grateful for them. And this gratitude forms a wholesome foundation for our practice. gratitude and an intention to live with ahimsa, non-harming. And so as we chant the refuges and precepts, we're giving voice to these intentions. And also the precepts honor our lineage, our spiritual lineage, our spiritual ancestors, respecting and, and arousing gratitude for those who have carried this tradition from our Asian ancestors, spiritual ancestors in India, in Thailand, in Burma, in Sri Lanka, in China and Tibet have with such love and care and dedication and strong intention kept these teachings alive. And now we are the ones who are keeping the teachings alive. 
in our practice, in our intention to carry them forward to the next generations. This is a really wholesome intention to care about these teachings, to keep them alive in how we choose moment by moment to manifest in this world. So let's begin by chanting. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa. Namo tasa padawato arahato samma sambuddhasa. Udang saranangga chami, namang saranangga chami, sangang saranangga chami. Tiampi budang saranang gachami. Tiampi damang saranang gachami. Tiampi sangang saranang gachami. Tiampi budang saranang gachami. Tatiampi damang sarnang gachami. Tatiampi sangang sarnang gachami. So taking the, the five refuges, let's chant together and and let's contemplate, um, not just uh, saying the words, but what does this mean in our life to refrain from destroying living beings? And remembering the spirit of, this, of these precepts, that they're trainings. They're not, they're not a litany of sins, uh, but they're training, what does it mean to refrain from supporting living beings if, uh, if we have ants in our house. Can we carry them outside rather than squashing them? What does it mean to support life and not only not destroy life, but, but can we support life? Can we live our lives and make choices not only to not kill, but also to support life with kindness, with compassion, with giving our resources to protect beings who are in harm's way, who are experiencing violence. So these precepts are deep, deep teachings that we can explore and deepen in how we choose to live. Panati pata veram lani sikapadam samadhyami. Adina dana veramani sigapadam samadhiya. Kame sumi chattara veramani sigapadam samadhiya. Musawada veramani Sikapadam 
Samadhiya Sura Maria Maja Pamadatana Veramani Sikapadam Samadhiya Idam Nisilam Maga Pala Nyanasa Pachayo Potu Sadhu, 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 anumoda. So um, we've been working our way through the Satipatthana Sutta uh, since September, and um, I know. So you you probably I don't think anybody's been along for the whole ride. <laughs> so uh, and that's fine. That's you know that that uh, that's the way um, you know life is. That uh, join when you can and when it works for you, and it's always great to, um, to connect with if you when you can be here. Uh, so we are now in the fourth section of the um, four establishments of mindfulness and uh, Satipatthana Sutta. And we're in the part talking about uh, the five khandas, the five aggregates of clinging. And the Buddha usually talks about you, them using that phrase, the five aggregates of clinging. And so these five aggregates uh, or heaps to translate the word khandas a bit more uh, literally uh, are the ways that we cling to a sense of self as being me or mine. And, um, and so these are the body and our uh, feeling tones, the feeling tones that arise. Um, so pleasant, unpleasant, neutral, and, um, and um, perceptions. We talked about perceptions. Uh, last time that I was here. And uh, today we're talking about volition, but I um, usually the, the focus is on intention. So uh, so we're talking about intention and then uh, next week we'll talk about consciousness. And then for the remainder of time, um, we'll go through the Four Noble Truths to end the session. Um, to end the, uh, we're, the last week will be uh, July 16th and uh, we'll finish the Four Noble Truths and we're going to take a break for the summer. So intention. Um, intention is very, a very interesting um, thing to contemplate because we form intentions. And we identify a lot with our intentions. We think, well, I'm going to um, meditate every day uh, and or change the way I eat or change or do more exercise or all of these intentions. And so we think that, and we have motivation. So motivation and intention are quite interrelated. They're not exactly the same thing. Motivation is what we draw our energy from. The, the, what, what is kind of driving us to connect to that intention. So the, the intentions that I just stated are uh, wholesome intentions. We want to um, 
be happier, we want to have more well-being, we want to be healthier, and uh, we want to uh, show up in a more kind and compassionate way in the world. Um, we want to have less self-destructive habits. So all of these are wholesome motivations that drive a particular intention. Intentions can be kind of short-term, like, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to do something today or tomorrow, uh, or I'm going to um, apologize for the way I spoke to my friend or my spouse or uh, somebody who I interacted unskillfully with. And, and they can be long-term. Um, I want to awaken for the benefit of all beings. So that's a long-term intention. Um, so, um, so as we know, as we've all learned that intentions are like everything else impermanent. And so, um, because the conditioning that we are wanting to perhaps change or things that we, patterns that we want to let go of, new habits, new attitudes that we want to cultivate, uh, they're not as strong perhaps as some of the deep underlying patterns that we've been conditioned to, uh, that condition to act from, to speak from, to that our thoughts arise from. Uh, so these may come, may have very you know, long, deep roots in our in our story, at least from our families of origin, and who knows, maybe deeper than that. And so, so intentions need to be renewed, they need to be uh, reconnected with, and, uh, and we need to also sort of water our intentions with um, uh, renewing and strengthening our motivations. So I've found um, in, in my own practice, in my own life, that the more that I cultivate wholesome intentions, the more I act out of wholesome intentions, uh, the happier I become, the more peaceful I become. So I'm less, I'm less uh, racked by regret and remorse and worry. And, um, and I'm, I'm less feeding my anger by, you know, the anger, what I, it's not my anger, but the anger that arises, you know, like, so having learned not to kind of keep stoking the story and <laughs> replaying the story, but you know, relying on my body, recognizing that when anger is, is nourished and given attention to, to uh, that there's suffering, that, that creates more suffering. And so, so what we learn through our practice is that uh, the happiness, the peace, the well-being that gradually develops, that we can have confidence in that and that can nourish us, our continued practice. Uh, and so, um, so intention you know, helps us to um, our connecting with our intention, connecting with our motivation helps us to uh, deepen our motivation and intention and, and it, it becomes a kind of a, a skillful cycle of um, awakening. Um, and so just as there is a um, dependent origi origination of uh, 
samsara, continued samsaric existence, there is also uh, a, an alternative, which I, I don't know by heart all the links of, but there is an, an alternative um, dependent origination of, of awakening, which, you know, of course, mindfulness is key and, and wholesome virtuous behavior is key. Uh, loving kindness is key. We have the, the awakening factors, which um, are also part of the, of the uh, fourth section of the Satipatthana Sutta. And actually I said I would move to the Four Noble Truths uh, to end, but I, I really also really want to um, spend some time with the awakening factors before the end of the year, the end of the, uh, the series. So, so these awakening factors uh, nourish our intention. And so um, there's a, there's a uh, saying from the Tibetan tradition that everything rides on the tip of intention, that tip of the iceberg, that um, can be visible at a particular moment, uh, that so much rides on renewing our intention, being aware of our intention. And so we can bring mindfulness to ourselves at any moment. And we can inquire into what is, what is the purpose of what I'm doing right now? So not everything has a deep purpose purpose might be, well, I'm, I'm uh, getting ready to make dinner. <laughs> so that's a good purpose it's, uh, for ourselves, for whoever else we might be eating with, if, if anybody. Um, so, uh, yeah, so, so bringing an inquiry into what is our purpose in this moment? Um, what is our intention? And, and intention ties into a sense of meaning in our lives as well. And meaning making is a really important part of how we understand our humanity, how we understand who we are, how we create a wholesome, I mean, the Buddha never said that there was no self. Mm -hmm. There is no permanent uh, separate self, but we are recreating, co-creating a wholesome sense of who we are. We don't have to use the word self, but who we are, how we are, how we are showing up in our lives, in the world, all the time. And intention is a part of that. Intention helps us to create a sense of, you know, what is, what is my meaning? And it doesn't have to be, you know, um, I'm going to change the world. None of us changes the world single-handedly. But we can be part of a sense of, you know, in my intention, I want to bring love, compassion in how I engage. You know, we can feel very overwhelmed by uh, the injustice in the world, the violence in the world, the, the racism, the exploitation, the 
the poverty, which comes about because of unbridled capitalism. And, and that can, that can be really damaging. It can be so uh, de-energizing. It can sap our sense of purpose, intention. So, so recognizing that these little ripples of, yes, I want to cultivate. I want to understand how I have been conditioned to be racist in my attitudes. So when this conditioning arises from the patterns that are deeply embedded in the unconscious mind, I don't, it does, I don't need to have a sense of, oh, I'm such a bad person, but I can reconnect with an intention of compassion for myself and compassion and for the suffering that that brings and compassion for how these patterns have been so entrenched in the world around us and a sense of you know, being motivated by, yes, I want to be the change. I want to not just talk about it, think about it, but I want to be the change. And so, so that being the change begins by just turning toward that attitude that we notice arising, perhaps, which, which expresses a non-acceptance of a person with a disability or a person who is, has a different um, skin color from ourselves or a different culture from ourselves, which, you know, different way of speaking, a different way of eating, all of the differences that, that we can retreat into, you know, our shell, or we can open up with interest and curiosity and, and, um, and value, uh, valuing, you know, what we can learn, what we can receive from what might not be familiar to us. So intention is so important and intention needs to be renewed. And we need to nourish the motivation. So the nourishing the motivation most essentially is with love because love is who we truly are. Love is uh, when we, as our practice deepens and we recognize that we're not what we think we are, we're not our thoughts because thoughts come and go, thoughts change. We're not our emotions, we're not our feelings, our feelings feeling tones. So all of the, pra all of the practices that we've done uh, exploring the Satipatthana Sutta have, have pointed again and again and again to the impermanent nature of all of these experiences, body experiences, sensations, feeling tones, thoughts, emotions, moods, all of these arise from conditions. So gradually in our practice, we learn to come to 
a resting and abiding in the simple presence of awareness. Maybe just for a moment. And it becomes something that we can learn to rest in, that presence, that abiding in an awareness which is stable. And we discover that that awareness is, is presence with a warmth, that warmth of love. It's a love that is for this being, for our own being, and radiates outward to all of life. And so this, this abiding in loving presence does nourish our practice. And it's something that simply unfolds as we let go of the identification with these um, changing phenomena that we think is me or mine. And so, so, Intention is key in this because we do cultivate intention in our practice, intention to be mindful, most essentially to be aware, to be aware of this moment arising, to be aware without judgment or preference uh, with what's motivating us, what's driving us in this moment. And so, you know, cultivating skillful motivations to, to wake up, to, to wake up, to be more present in our lives, more at peace in our lives, more at peace in our relationships, to, be, to cause less struggle and strife in the circles, to be generous, to support that which is good. And the discernment Intention is also very connected to discernment. Discernment of what is skillful, and what is unskillful, what brings joy and peace and what brings continued you know, suffering and struggle. So, so that discernment is, uh, is so important. So, so the, this, this, uh, Reflection on intention is, is, is really an important part of, of our practice. So maybe we can just take a moment and, and ask ourselves, what was the intention that brought you to come to practice today, either to come arrive here at SFASB or to, uh, to tune in on Zoom to, to, uh, to join the Sunday Sangha and meditate together with friends. So, I, so you had a choice. Do you remember the moment in which you decided? Um, was there a sense of resistance? Like, oh, I think I'm just gonna, you know, sit outside and have a long cup of coffee on the balcony, you know? 
for uh, I I think I want to I want to nourish my practice by being with friends, being with practice friends, Dharma friends. What was that spark of intention? Maybe it came out of suffering because sometimes when we, you know, the first noble truth, suffering, when we recognize, oh, you know, my mind has been, I've been in a kind of a fog. I've just been kind of bumbling around, stumbling from one thing to another. And and I haven't uh, spoken very skillfully to, you know, my friends or my spouse or my kids. Um, I think I I need to connect with the sangha. So that that's also skillful to recognize suffering. Like that's the first noble truth. Recognize there is suffering, and what that is, and to remember that there is a way out that we can recognize the cause of suffering and there's the possibility of more freedom and and every time every moment that we experience a letting go and an opening up and an arriving at more spaciousness that nourishes our practice for the next moment or for the next time that we fall into some kind of habitual pattern of creating suffering for ourselves. So what brought you here? What brought you to practice? And, and I invite you to also ask yourself, What intention do I want to bring to this sitting? Kindness to myself, forgiveness for myself, uh, compassion for myself and for others. letting go. So all of these intentions are, they're interconnected and a, a particular way of expressing an intention might be arising from the circumstances of your life right now. Circumstances of your life an hour ago or yesterday or, or that are coming together in your family. May I be strong in my practice to support my family in the loss that we're experiencing, sickness of a family member, and so on. So we can bring these intentions to our practice. And, and it's, it's especially strengthening when we do bring that dimension of for the benefit of others. May I awaken, or deepen, or be more free to, for the benefit of others that I can be a source of kindness, of, of, uh, of light for the benefit of others. So as we prepare to, to uh, sit, please um, feel free to release your posture for a moment. Uh, stretch, stand up if you like.
Let's begin by bringing our attention, our mindful, kindful attention to the body sitting on the earth. And on this cushion, this bench, this chair, whatever posture you are in, lying down, standing up. Gratitude to the body for supporting our life, supporting our practice. Gratitude to all the conditions that have enabled us to, to meet the Dharma, to receive the Dharma to engage in Dharma practice. Remembering what brought us to practice. Suffering most likely, the aspiration, also most likely, wanting to be the best we can be. The care, the caring for ourselves, which may not have been that strong, but was strong enough to support our intention to experience more peace and happiness in our lives. And perhaps reflecting on how your intention and motivation has changed, perhaps over years of practice, there's less suffering. And perhaps the altruistic dimension of your intention has developed and deepened and become more pervasive. Sometimes I bring to mind how individuals have made a difference in my life. How a simple word or acknowledgement or a recognition being seen, being seen not as somebody who doesn't measure up, who falls short, but being seen as somebody who does have a heart that aspires to love, a heart that aspires to be compassionate, a heart that aspires to be free. How that being seen has lifted me and carried me and supported me in my practice. And that each one of us can be that one who is seeing the deep truth 
of someone's essential being. And that we need to be awake to do that. And so remembering how being seen, being recognized by teachers, by wise and kind people in my life, even just very brief encounters with people have nourished my practice. And bringing in the intention to be that, be that presence. that calls forth the best in whatever ways we can. So, bringing your attention, gathering your attention to this moment, this breath, the experience of the body connecting with the solidity of the earth, support of the earth, touch of the air on the skin, Sounds which come and go. Always to come home to the body, to come home to this moment, this unfolding moment. And coming home again and again.
Noticing if the mind is drifting. And inquiring into that, the energy underneath the drifting thoughts. What are the energies that are driving the thoughts? And are they aligned with the motivation? Are they aligned with your intention to awaken? Your intention to, to know peace, to know love, compassion, So not judging if the motivations are perpetuating suffering, simply realigning, beginning again. And then compassion, recognizing. In the, in the chants that we do before our sitting, we, we say, Dam Nisila Maga Fala Nyanasa Pachayo Hotu. May these practices bring about knowledge of the path and the fruits of liberation. And so knowledge of the path is knowing what brings suffering, knowing how to respond to the habitual energies of the mind, knowing how to work with them, knowing how to let them go, knowing how to nourish the heart, with kindness and love, compassion.
as we come to the end of our formal practice, we can bring to mind the blessings, connect with those blessings, the goodness that has arisen within this framework of our sitting and, and from all the goodness of our life. And we can allow it to nourish us, nourish our intention. And we can also share it. We can bring to mind those that we know or those that we don't know who are suffering, who are struggling, or who are thriving, and we wish them to continue to thrive and offer the blessings, the goodness of our practice to share with them. May the blessings, goodness of our practice in our lives serve and support the happiness, well being, and liberation of all beings. So oh, yeah, thanks uh, for that question. So it's it, it, it's just um, to just briefly summarize and and really you expressed uh, so much that was really insightful and helpful um, in the way you expressed it. Um, that yes, there are skillful intentions, and and so we we cultivate them and and the and we but but or and we don't solidify around them we don't construct a self around them mm -hmm. so so that so we can we can cultivate skillful intentions we can um you know learn that we're abiding in skillful states and then the ego comes in and says, this is my new skillful self. <laughs> this is my new awakened self. <laughs> and, uh, and so, you know, and then, you know, immediately there's the contraction that, oh, you know, I, so this is what I am now, and this is what I need to defend, and this is what I need to project and all of that, right? So, yeah, and so just really just always remembering impermanence, remembering um, just to, you know, um, to let be and simply be. Uh, and, and there is, there is such a thing, I, you know, in psychology, there's such a thing as healthy attachment. Mm -hmm. And, and in, and in practice, there's such a thing as, I don't know, attachment is always used to mean, you know, being hooked, but we do cultivate, you know, we do care, we do bring ourselves home to our practice. And, and that, um, that is what, you know, continues to nourish our practice. So, um, yeah, so it's it's a kind of a you know a, a healthy attachment in the sense of caring and loving this being that we are, and aspiring to uh, you know an altruistic uh, intention to become free for the benefit of others. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. 
So I think I think I'm going to uh, I'm going to end the recording now. <laughs>